Hello, everybody. Welcome to the session. Uh, last parallel session of the day. So, you know, energy. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm chairing the session. Karina is um, is presenting, and the session is working and writing in the presence of a peer in an online space, facilitating submissions to achieve HEA accreditation. Question mark at the end there. There it is, scrolling across the screen, like <laughs> something from Nasdaq. Um, We've got 20 minutes, same as the other parallel sessions, and then um, with around about five minutes to go, um, we'll, we'll have um, time for a bit of Q&A. So uh, do comment, say hi, question throughout in the text chat. I'll keep an eye on that and pick up on that at the end. But uh, other than that, Karina, I'll hand over to you to present. Thank you. Lovely. Thanks, Dave, for the introduction. Hi, everyone. Thanks for um, joining me, joining us today in this nice, warm weather, at least here around Milton Keynes. Um, I am presenting about this little scholarship project. So I want to thank the fastest the scholarship of uh, teaching and innovation in the Faculty of Arts and Social Science for providing us a small grant to, to conduct this little uh, project. And my project partners are Malik and Paige, so just to acknowledge their support and contributions. Um, so what I have for us today, uh, I'd talk, uh, give a, a little bit about the background and the rationale for the project. Why did we need to do this? Um, uh, about the project itself, some phases about the writing partnership uh, results so far and the next steps. So you may have been with me if you, I was presenting at two o'clock. So I probably gave enough introduction about, you know, what a, uh, uh, HEA fellowship is, so I'm not going to approach that part of it. But it is important to highlight where where we are at, why we are here. It seems that the higher education sector has been driving the need of HEA fellowship recognition as an indication of institutional excellence in teaching. So we all now have to do from time to time the TEF report and HEA fellowships are recognized there are reported there. So like many institutions, the OU have developed some approaches to encourage more people to apply for their uh, recognition for their fellowship. Um, we do have um, institution schemes, uh, internal scheme, which is fully online and accredited, which is called Applaud. This is big, short name for a very big, <laughs> short acronym for a big name. Um, but uh, uh, um, the, the problem is that Applaud is a big scheme, support lots of candidates across lots of um, all our faculties and units, um, because it's not only teaching, it's about uh, uh, our colleagues that support learning across the institution as well. So it's about supporting them. Um, but because it is a large scheme and we have lots of candidates, we don't tailor support, unfortunately. We have, you know, uh, uh, several cohorts, three cohorts per year, and we deliver three workshops per cohort, and they go through some steps of the process. And that's it. So uh, uh, um, without this tailored support, some candidates don't finish, don't complete, postpone submission, or withdraw from this scheme. So we, we have been in contact with some faculties to then support us and provide to provide that additional support if they can. And one of the faculties uh, is supporting us through a, a, a small scholarship project. So they are looking into providing their further support, even to invest in, uh, uh, into this, which is fantastic. So, and this, this one, this in particular project I'm going to report today, it is, it is about, you know, developing, uh, uh, um, helping these candidates to continue motivate and help each other in pairs within the same faculty remotely. Um, like I said about the project, what is this about? So it's about helping colleagues to complete and achieve uh, uh, their fellowship. Um, it is about pairing them within the same faculty 
because it's much easier and and the project is funded by that faculty so it's about providing them uh, uh, that additional support um, and structure to work in pairs this work is underpinned by existing research on academic writing groups uh, uh, and commitment to others to work uh, particularly where working with an accountability partner uh, apparently, it suggests that working in a social presence of others increases motivation, persistent and successful completion. So we were really uh, 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 excited, you know, by the existing literature to, to do this project. It is an 18-month project and involves two cohorts. So one has finished, so that's why we are presenting some, uh, um, some of the data today. Uh, and another one um, has started on the 1st of August. And we will run an evaluation after that. So after the two of them uh, um, finished, so we then run a full evaluation of the project to get, to get uh, things uh, going and, and see, capture progress uh, and their feedback, candidates' feedback on, on the project and how we can improve. Um, phases, so this is about pairing colleagues, so it's about pairing two, preferably two, uh, uh, colleagues from the same faculty to work on their application. So, and that we divided uh, uh, the process in three phases. One is about familiarization, get familiar with the paperwork that is required, because if you, if you, if you don't know, uh, to apply for uh, um, a HEA fellowship requires some paperwork, some understanding of the UK PSF and, you know, develop your case around those standards and framework. We, as a scheme, have um, uh, also our own paperwork and requirements. So it's important that candidates are familiar with the, the bigger picture, with the process itself. The second phase is about to get it written. Mm, that's the hard part, is to make time, carve time to actually write. And we all have this problem, not only for fellowship, but for any of the writing we needed to do because we are uh, 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 very busy. And then the final phase is about finishing off. It's about editing, references, uh, uh, send to the mentors to, to have a look and provide feedback. But I really want to focus on phase two because it is challenging. So, and I found that this is this picture really tells the story of the challenge that can be to get started with our writing. Um, it's not always easy, and that's uh, why we decided to 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 create to develop this little project and in particular to develop this uh, little structure for to help colleagues to write so at this point you know colleagues will be already paid so they attend our information session who are interested so we invite everybody from the faculty to attend a session um and then we explain what it is and the time commitment and you know and and ask who is uh, uh, would like to get engaged um then we pair them or they pair themselves during the 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 the, the session the information session because it's very informal and they sometimes get to know each other or they, sometimes they already know each other from the same faculty uh, um so then we pair these candidates and these candidates then receive a, a information pack that includes this structure. And this structure is the foundation of the pairing uh, writing groups. So we ask them to, by, by, by the time they start, they need to be connected together. So they sit down for 10, 15 minutes uh, uh, um, to prepare, and unload to make a commitment even to get to know each other sometimes develop a rapport and then have the sprint 20 minutes for writing to sit and write uh, at the sprint then after the 20 minutes finish then they we ask them to spend five to ten minutes to reflect share uh, uh, um, um, their, their progress 
and motivate each other and continue for another 20 minutes. So after maybe two sessions of 20 minutes with five minutes in the middle, maybe you have a longer break. So this approach, it's not new. So you may be familiar with the Pomodoro, Pomodoro approach um, or uh, right, right now approach. So this is a mix of these two to fit uh, 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 um, our colleagues in this particular program. So together with the information packed and with the documents we sent to them, we also give some tips of how they can um, they can get ready for this. So we ask them to arrange meeting and book in the, in their calendars and really enter that in their calendars. Um, we ask candidates to pick a day and time wisely that really suits them. For example, it wouldn't suit me if I pick on Monday because Monday is morning mostly is a day where I deal with paperwork, emails, admin. So that wouldn't work for me. So be strategic on the day um, that is really suitable for you. Give this meeting the same respect as any other commitment in your work calendar. We tend, a lot of us, not, not, not all, but a lot of us, and I am uh, uh, um, guilt of that too, um, my things, our things can always wait. We prioritize everything else, but my promotion or the, my paper or my claim for uh, HEA fellowship can wait while other things come. I've done many times <laughs> this with study leave, for example. Um, so yes, um, and they will be running against a time frame, a deadline. So we ask candidates to really commit to the calendar, to the, <laughs> to the book, to the calendar uh, uh, commitment they made. Agree on what you are going to do with your partner and set the 20 minutes timer um, it's available um, as an app so if you if you look for a pomodoro approach pomodoro app pomodoro pomodoro timer you will find as an app and can help you uh, 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 to keep on time including the five minutes break so i use it i use it for some of my tasks as well so mute any distractions like email. So turn, turn your emails off, write with the mic uh, muted. So by then they will be in a meeting, like a Teams meeting or a um, Skype for Business or a Zoom meeting. So they will be in the presence of each other online, but in their own home, as we do now. Um, and we ask them to mute the microphone and even sometimes to turn off the camera, but be there. And then once the timer uh, uh, um, finishes, the 20 minutes finishes, then they turn on the camera and the microphone and, con and have a chat and a reflection. So, uh, because the social presence matters, it's very important, is your accountability. Keep each other, on the meeting agenda, because some of them in the value in the little questionnaire we sent to them, some of them said that they actually some didn't even talk about um, their claim. They were just like it was just nice to catch up, which is good because uh, a lot of our colleagues now, uh, mostly now because of the pandemic, are disconnected from each other. So it is important, uh, important, it was for them important to catch up and share practice. It's still valid by sharing practice, but the intention was to get the results uh, and bring your necessary supplies. Chocolates, coffee, water is always good to have with you. These are real needs. <laughs> um, results so far. We... In the previous cohorts, 17 colleagues from this faculty uh, were registered for the scheme, four joined formally and two informally. Yes, it was a small number of people. All who joined the trial 
submitted their application. We were very pleased. But we were even happier when all were successful. So this was really good, a good, good result from the first way we were trialing this. Um, it is, is this evidence that this works? Probably not. It's, is this evidence that uh, there is potential? Absolutely, yes. So absolutely, yes, has potential to help people to keep on track, motivate, submit, and even be successful. Um, more results. So we have asked them if uh, uh, um, they think the writing with a partner has helped them to progress their application. And some of them said that it did considerably help them. So we were happy with that. But again, numbers are not big, but you know, it's promising. Um, there has been impact, and this one is beyond the completion of application and being successful. It the person said it was uh, uh, um, there is a huge element here of sharing good practice, swapping ideas and learning from the, the ways different subject areas work. Because even though they were from the same faculty, they were in different schools and different disciplines. So it was a really good way to uh, um, communicate good practice across colleagues. So that's, that's it from me. Um, thank you. Um, if you have any questions, you can send to the, the team um, um, or you can look for me. My, my contact details are also on the website, in the conference website. So happy to uh, um, share the slides and continue this conversation. Um, I'm stop sharing here. Dave, I, that's all from me, but would like to hear from colleagues too. Yeah, lovely. Um, thanks for that. Thanks for running to time. It's, pr it's pretty quiet in Chatland. I think everybody's really, really hot. It's 28 <laughs> degrees here. It is which, hot. Which would be sort of fine if it was like mid-August or late July, but yeah. it's just confusing. So um, and I want to ask... we were on holidays in a beach, for example, not here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's not that it's not the ideal scenario for no. uh, looking. So, so if people do have any any um, questions, do post them to the chat now. But um, I want to ask about how people, if you've got any information on how people responded to the the kind of actual moment of sort of co-writing, and whether they found that. I mean, it's something that I quite enjoy because because um, if I if I know there's somebody in that space with me, then I'm more likely to concentrate and do some actual work. Did people did people find that the the actual um, being in the same space together and and um, you know, editing each other's words or whatever did they find that easy to do or strange or like pressured? I mean, obviously it was a success to us. It must have been a success if you got everybody through because the amount because you know we run HEA fellowship scheme at my institution oh. and. and a lot of people find it very difficult to crack on and, and do it. It's quite an iterative process. So how did people f find the sort of practice of co-writing online? Because there's nothing quite like it offline. No, I've, I've, I've joined a writing retreat this year and mm -hmm. in the post, the facilitator just ran this, this, uh, it was a, the Pomodoro approach all the time for the whole morning, three mornings in a row. Mm -hmm. And we were all writing different things, but the, the commitment of being there and feeling like, oh, I needed to produce something, it's, it's, quite, <laughs> it's quite something. <laughs> so there yeah. is a lot of pressure there. So I just wonder if colleagues have joined writing retreats online. Yeah, it's not something that, it's not something that I've done that form. It's always just been with colleagues. But but it but it's worked pretty well. I guess what it is is that as soon as you know that there's somebody um, in that sort of shared document with you and and you're chatting to them, then you kind of up your game, don't you? You concentrate a little bit more. You get a little bit. I mean, I know you've got the that kind of um, what's it called the pom 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 I can never pronounce it. What's Pomodoro. it called? It's like a pizza. <laughs> okay, so you got the pizza technique. 
because I think that, I mean there's a string to that because you're um switching off distractions aren't you you've got this inherent sort of structure but so I can understand how that helps with focus yeah. I mean I'll find any excuse not to write it's one of the reasons mm. that um, you know I'm, I'm not that I'm not I haven't published that much yeah so but I think I mean I guess I guess that that must be working that kind of accountability to somebody else that's very iterative and very in the moment. Yeah, yeah. Is oh, uh, thanks. So yeah. we had a comment here. Yeah, it is good for time management overall, isn't it? Yes. I don't think I'd ever stick to it though. <laughs> This uh, comment from Coco there. Yes. Oh, okay. Rogue, in a rogue way, which I read as a rouge way, which was which was strange for a second. Um, yeah, I don't know. Is it rogue or is it just helpful? Um, I think I think one of the things that we've started to get good at over the pandemic is find ways to be co-present and to co-work. Um, whilst not being physically co-located mm. um you don't actually have to be in the same room to be in the same place if you see what i mean so I, i'm a i'm a big fan of these kind of methods that actually because because my feeling is that as soon as there's two people in a shared document the document changes from a tool to a to a, a space or a place and that certainly the the most enjoyable uh, moments of work that I've had over the pandemic have been working in like shared documents or shared padlets or shared Miro or mural spaces. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Carla has also said that now I've just before I, I comment on Carla's a uh, Coco. Yes. So if you can find a colleague, um, if you can find a colleague that also uh, um, are going into, are interested in uh, their senior fellow, try, try this, try this method. Even if it is just in the beginning, it really helps to focus. And because it's about your practice, you can really just write. You don't have to do, you, you will need references eventually. You will need a re reference to back your scholarship. But because it's your practice and you, you, you can dump a lot of ideas down in, without much worried about typing and errors and anything. So if you can dump as much as you can 20 minutes and then check again on them, on each other, um, uh, it probably, um, it could help. It could help. You never know. It has helped uh, some people. And we have even a bigger group now engaged in, in, in the, the, the new cohort. So Carla has mentioned about a PhD writing retreat um, that is done online. Thanks, Carla, for sharing that. Um, again, time is lots structured because when we are online, when we are at a distance, so we can we can get lost, we can we can get distracted, we are very busy. So it's good we can get lost. <laughs> well we can we can. There is so much work we can get lost. So but we can then focus on a task for a period of time because you know that you will be contacting your colleague or then you will we will we will regroup with the retreat people, for example, and then have to talk about your progress, but also because you wanted to do something productive, huh? You wanted to use that time in a productive way. Well, there's something there's something really interesting about this that something that's just struck me uh, looking at the discussion is that because coming from the University of Arts London, I think what it is is it's a form of creative anxiety. It's like the the, the distress of the blank page, isn't it? And one of the things that people do in um, life drawing is they force you to do very, very, very quick drawings. So they'll say you've got 30 seconds to do a drawing or a minute to do a drawing. Because sometimes it's better to just put something down than nothing down. And I can see how the co-writing and the accountability to come back and talk. Because if, if there's, it's worse to have nothing to talk about when you come back than it is to have something that's not quite right to talk about isn't it and you yes. know we do the same for our students all the time we kind of we encourage our students say hey show us your work in progress let's discuss it truth is it's really hard it's quite distressing and actually you need a bit of a structure around that to help you to do that but i think any of these processes especially around writing are really really useful if they encourage you just to get started 
um, because any writing process is is draft and edit and edit and edit and edit and 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 once I learned that even the most brilliant writers don't get it right first time, but they draft and edit and edit and edit and edit, I thought, oh, maybe I can do this. Yes. So it. So I. I think for me, just I think for me, it would be really useful if we saw writing as a creative practice mm. rather than as an academic practice. It's both because yes. then you wouldn't feel quite so weird about being anxious about it because if i gave you a canvas and a load of paints and i said paint something you know that's that's quite a sharp moment isn't it but when we yeah. open up a blank word word document apparently that's not a big deal i think it's a big deal i think it's the same you know yeah. and um adebsi is it is it am i correct spelling your name pronouncing your name adebsi adebsi Anyway, we don't feel bad. We all make excuses, like Dave was saying, for not writing. So we all make an excuse. And when I block time for study leave, for example, something else comes up. Da, I'm doing something. <laughs> so it's always easier not to write, isn't it? It's always easier not to write. But yeah, we are under a lot of pressure. And but this this type of that's why it's key to get a partner in the same level, like for example, the fellowship. Um, um, it's good to get a partner because you are not going to show this. It's not the final product. It's really some ideas down. And by having someone, a pair, it really helps uh, uh, you to reflect on what you did and sometimes talk about our teaching practice in this case, but any other work. Talk about our, talking about our work really helps us to reflect. Reflect on what we've done and what can be added and can does, maybe doesn't need to be added. Um, and and get some ideas down. It does. It does help. It does. I, I use. I use it. I use it from time to time. Not just for writing. When for, to get get my to do list ticked. I get okay. Twenty minutes for this task. I'm going to. It's like like someone else mentioned here in the chat box for time management in general. It's it's good. Great. Okay. Well, thank you for that. Thanks and thanks for the contributions in the chat from people. Yes. Um, uh, and thank you for bringing that, that lovely, precise uh, presentation that you did in just under 20 minutes. So you must have got into the habit. Um, <laughs> we better wrap up there. I have um, my Pomodoro on. <laughs> yeah, there it is. There it is. We better wrap up there so that we've got time to take a little break before the keynote that starts for um, But great to see people. And um, yeah, thanks very much. Cheers, all. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Dave, for uh, sharing. Thanks, everyone, for your contributions.